Stop. Put down that feedback for a second and listen to me very closely. You are likely making a mistake that is quietly draining your bank account every single day. You look at your cattle and you see them eating, you see them walking, and you think everything is fine. But inside their bodies, there is a biological war happening that you are losing. You are probably pouring expensive protein into that trough, thinking that more protein equals more muscle and more weight. It seems logical, right? But here is the cold hard truth that feed salesmen do not want you to know. Excess protein does not turn into muscle. It turns into expensive ammonia that your animal has to waste energy to pee out. You are literally paying to make your cattle urinate your profits away. And it gets worse. If you get this ratio wrong, you are not just losing money on feed costs. You are stressing the liver of your animal, you are stunting their growth potential, and you are delaying the finishing time by weeks or even months. Imagine if I told you that by actually reducing the amount of protein in your mix, but changing the source and the ratio with energy, you could fatten your cattle faster and cheaper. It sounds impossible, but it is pure science. And it is exactly what the biggest, most profitable feedlots in the world do. They do not guess. They do not throw random scoops of soybean meal into the mix. They use a specific calculation, a golden ratio of protein to energy that unlocks explosive growth. Today, I am going to hand you that key. I am going to reveal the exact numbers you need, the mistakes you are making right now, and how to fix them before your next feeding time. But you have to stay with me, because if you miss the part about the rumen dip, the rest of this information could actually be dangerous for your herd. Let us start by destroying a myth that has bankrupted more ranchers than drought. The myth is that high protein is the holy grail of fattening. It is not. Protein is structural. It is the bricks of the house. But energy, coming from carbohydrates and fats, is the cement and the construction crew. You can have piles of bricks, but without the crew to lay them, you just have a pile of expensive rubble. When you feed a cow, you are not actually feeding the cow. This is the concept that 90% of people fail to grasp. You are feeding the billions of microscopic bacteria and protozoa living inside the cow's first stomach, the rumen. These little bugs are the workforce. They digest the feed, they reproduce, and then, surprisingly, the cow digests them. That is right. The cow gets most of its true protein by digesting the bacteria that grew on the feed you provided. So, what happens when you dump high-protein feed with low energy? The bacteria break down that protein rapidly. It releases nitrogen in the form of ammonia. The bacteria try to grab that ammonia to build their own bodies, but they need energy to do it. If you did not provide enough starch or sugar, that ammonia floats free. It absorbs into the blood, it hits the liver, the liver panics. It has to convert that toxic ammonia into urea to get it out of the body. This process burns energy. Instead of using calories to put on fat and meat, your steer is burning calories just to detoxify the expensive meal you just gave it. You are paying double for the privilege of slowing down your production. Now, let us talk about the magic number. For a finishing steer, an animal that is in the final phase of fattening, you do not need 18% protein. You do not even need 16%. Most reliable studies and successful operations aim for a sweet spot between 12% and 14% crude protein, provided that the energy levels are high enough. If you are over 14% on a finishing ration, you are likely wasting money unless you have a very specific high-speed genetic breed that requires it. But here is the catch, and this is where it gets tricky. Not all protein is created equal. We have rumen-degradable protein and bypass protein. Rumen-degradable protein is what feeds the bacteria. This is cheap stuff like urea or the protein found in fresh pasture. Bypass protein escapes the fermentation vat and goes straight to the true stomach to be absorbed as amino acids. This is more like toasted soybean meal or distiller's grains. 
if you only feed cheap urea, your cattle might have the theoretical protein percentage, but they will not grow as fast because they lack the high-quality amino acids for massive muscle growth. I know a rancher who thought he was a genius. He bought the cheapest source of nitrogen he could find, which was pure agricultural urea. He mixed it in without weighing it properly, thinking he was boosting his protein levels to 20%. He thought his bulls would look like bodybuilders. Three days later, he found two of his best steers dead, bloated, legs stiff in the air. Why? Ammonia toxicity. He flooded the engine with fuel but had no spark. He killed his profit because he did not understand the balance. Do not be that guy. Before I explain exactly how to mix these sources for the perfect ratio, I want to ask you something serious. Have you ever looked at the manure in your pen? It sounds gross, but it is the best diagnostic tool you have. If the manure is stacking up in tall, stiff pyramids, your protein is too low or your fiber is too high. Digestion is slow, you are losing time. If the manure is flat, gray, and bubbling, or if it looks like dirty water, you have pushed them too hard. Acidosis is setting in, and you are blowing out nutrients. You want a cow pie that forms a soft, flat circle with a dimple in the middle. That dimple is the sign of perfection. It means your protein and energy are shaking hands perfectly inside the rumen. And speaking of perfection, we are building a community here of serious producers who want to dominate the market, not just participate in it. If you are finding value in this, if you want to stop guessing and start knowing, do me a favor. Subscribe to Biggest Bulls and Cow right now. We are not here to waste your time with pretty pictures. We are here to give you the raw data that builds bank accounts. Leave a comment below telling me what protein percentage you are currently using. I want to see the variety in our community. Are you using 12%, 16%? Let us discuss it. Now let us get back to the strategy because I promised you the value plus information. The secret weapon in fattening cattle is not just the percentage, but the concept of synchronization. You need to synchronize the release of nitrogen with the release of energy. Think of it like a dance. Corn is a fast energy source. Dry hay is a slow energy source. Urea is a flash flood nitrogen source. Soybean meal is a slow release protein source. If you feed urea, which dissolves instantly, with dry hay, which digests slowly, it is a disaster. The nitrogen spikes and disappears before the bacteria can digest the hay to use it. The result? The nitrogen is peed out and the hay sits in the stomach clogging the system. The animal feels full but is starving for nutrients. This is why cattle on poor quality dry grass with a cheap lick block often lose weight. The timing is off. To get the explosive growth we are talking about, you need to match speeds. If you use urea, you must have a fast energy source like cracked corn or molasses available at the exact same time. This allows the bacteria to grab the energy and the nitrogen simultaneously and build microbial protein, which is the best protein your cow can get. Here is a practical recipe framework you can adapt. For a steer weighing 400 kilograms that you want to finish quickly, you want your total diet to be around 12 to 13% crude protein. But you want the energy, measured in total digestible nutrients, or TDN, to be above 70%. How do you get there? You cannot do it with grass alone. Grass usually taps out at 60% energy. You need grain. A solid ration might look like this. 40% corn or sorghum for high energy, 15-20% to protein concentrate, like soybean meal or cottonseed meal, 30-40% to roughage or silage to keep the rumen working and prevent bloat, and a carefully measured mineral packet. But wait, there is a hidden danger I hinted at earlier. The rumen dip. This happens when you switch diets. If you watch this video and immediately run out to change your feed from grass to this high-grain optimized protein mix, you will crash your cattle. The bacteria population that digests grass is completely different from the population that digests grain. It takes three weeks for the population to shift. If you switch overnight, the grass bugs die, the grain bugs are not there yet, and digestion stops. 
the cow stops eating, the immune system crashes, you lose money. You must use the step up method. Start with 20% of the new mix and 80% of the old. Every three or four days, increase the new mix by 10%. It is tedious, it is annoying, but it is the difference between a steer that gains 1.5 kilograms a day and one that stalls out. Let me tell you about the urea savings hack that big producers use. Vegetable protein sources like soy are expensive. Urea is cheap. You can substitute some of the natural protein with urea to save cost, but there is a hard limit. Never, ever let urea provide more than one-third of the total protein in the diet. And never let it exceed 1% of the total dry matter intake. If you cross that line, pal, palatability drops. The cattle will smell the ammonia in the feed and refuse to eat it. And if they do eat it, you risk the toxicity we talked about. Also, consider the heat increment. This is something almost nobody talks about in basic guides. When a cow digests food, it creates body heat. Fiber creates a lot of heat. Protein creates a moderate amount. Fat creates very little heat. If you are fattening cattle in a tropical climate or during a heat wave, feeding excess protein is a disaster. The process of deaminating that excess protein generates internal heat. Your cattle will pant, they will seek shade, and they will stop eating to cool down. In hot weather, you should actually lower the protein slightly and increase the fat content, perhaps using whole cotton seeds or vegetable oil, to keep the energy density high without overheating the engine. Another critical element is water. It sounds boring, I know, but hear me out. High-protein diets increase urine production significantly. If you increase the protein ratio but do not double-check your water flow, the animal cannot flush the nitrogen. They will self-regulate by stopping eating. You might think they are full, but they are actually dehydrated and intoxicated. Check your troughs. Are they clean? Is the flow rate fast enough? A finishing steer can drink 50 to 70 liters of water a day. If the trough takes 10 minutes to refill, that is a bottleneck in your production line. Now, let us talk about the difference between bulls and steers. This is vital. A bull, an intact male, has natural testosterone. He has a higher metabolic rate and a higher drive to build lean muscle. He can utilize a slightly higher protein ratio, maybe up to 14 or 15% effectively, because his hormones are screaming build muscle. A steer, or a heifer, puts on fat easier. If you feed a heifer the same high-protein diet as a bull, she will just deposit expensive fat patches or waste the nutrient. You need to tailor the ratio. Bulls get more protein, steers and heifers get more energy. There is a technique called phase feeding. This is the advanced level. When the calf is young, say 200 kilograms, it is building frame and bone. It needs 16 to 18% protein. As it grows to 350 kilograms, you drop the protein to 14% and raise the energy. When it hits 450 kilograms and you are in the final push, you drop protein to 12% and max out the energy. Many ranchers make the mistake of feeding the same growth ration from start to finish. That is literally burning money in the final months. The animal does not need that much protein anymore. It needs energy to fill out the marbling. I want you to think about your operation right now. Visualize your feed room. Visualize your cattle. Are you feeding them based on tradition? My grandfather always fed them corn and hay. Or are you feeding them based on biology? The market does not care about your tradition. The market pays for weight, for finish, and for quality meat. The margin for error is getting smaller every year. Feed costs are rising. Fuel costs are rising. The only way to survive and thrive is to be smarter than the guy next door. You need to become an obsessionist about the details. Weigh your feed. Do not use a shovel. Use a bucket that you have calibrated on a scale. Know exactly how many kilograms of protein supplement every head is getting. If you are guessing, you are gambling. And I do not want you to gamble with your livelihood. There is one last thing, a final piece of the puzzle that ties everything together and it has to do with the physical texture of the feed. You can have the perfect protein ratio, the perfect energy balance, but if you grind your grain too fine into a powder, it passes through the rumen too fast. 
the bacteria can't grab it. It ends up in the manure, fermented in the large intestine, causing loose, acidic feces. If you leave the grain whole, like whole corn, a percentage of it will pass through undigested. You need to process your grain just enough, cracked, rolled, or coarsely ground, to maximize the surface area for the bacteria, without turning it into dust. This mechanical factor influences how well your protein ratio actually works. We have covered the biology of the rumen, the danger of ammonia toxicity, the specific percentages for finishing, the synergy between energy and nitrogen, and the importance of water and feed texture. This is not just information, this is a blueprint for profitability. But a blueprint is useless if it stays on the paper. You have to go out there and apply it. You have to look at your animals with new eyes. We are building something massive here at Biggest Bulls and Cow. We want to be the number one resource for ranchers who mean business. If this video opened your eyes, if it gave you one single idea that saves you money, then you are part of this family. Do not just close this video and forget it. Hit that subscribe button right now. Join us. Share this video with a fellow cattleman who is struggling or who is stubborn. Maybe this will be the wake-up call they need. Leave a comment below with your location and the breed of cattle you raise. I love reading where our community is growing from. Let us turn your farm into a factory of high-quality beef. We are here to grow together as responsible, smart, profitable ranchers. Subscribe and let us keep learning. I will see you in the next video with more industry secrets.